Thank you, Greg. What an honor it is to be presenting our project today. It has been quite a journey. Uh, my name is Nancy Turner, and uh, I'll be presenting this uh, uh, story of envisioning our future at Temple University Libraries. I served as the project lead for all three project uh, phases. When ARL put out its call for proposals, Temple was preparing to move to this very different library building, the Charles, and we twisted the uh, RLIF space question around a bit because we wanted to focus on the staff experience of changing spaces and support for those changes. And this was important because we were planning a move from a very traditional library space, browsing stacks, hundreds of study carols and hardwired computers for students, private offices for many of the staff, to a very different library space with open offices, the bulk of the collections in an automated storage retrieval system, and a scholar studio with high-end computers for specialized work, a maker space, a virtual reality lab, and plenty of collaboration spaces for innovation. These were our initial research questions. How is the space making an impact on how staff work? What do they see as opportunities in the new spaces? And what do they imagine might be challenges? And what are the ways in which staff um, are challenged in making the transition to a new kind of space? And how do they perceive the support that they're receiving? We used one-on-one -on -one semi-structured interviews prior to the move to the new library, asking staff about the spaces they worked in as individuals, with colleagues, and with users. And we conducted a second set of interviews six months into the move. Our interest was as much about the space as the support for changes in space and changes more generally. The response was pretty solid. We conducted 29 interviews in the first phase and 29 interviews in the second, with about 50% of interviewees uh, who participated in both phases of the first two projects. A primary theme that emerged from those interviews was, not unexpectedly, the need for continual communication about change. Staff were enduring many new building hiccups in the spaces they were using for their work. Everything from uh, noise to technicians fixing HVAC issues in the ceilings to technology that was not all in place in both the meeting rooms and instruction spaces. And so it was frustrating. Um, and um, because they are trying to do their work as normal and there's all this other stuff going on. But things were coming together and we were settling into space. By the summer of 2020, we thought our project was complete and we wrote up our report, presented the research results to staff, to ARL, even presented at the library assessment conference in 2020. So this is a picture of our staff workspace now, and it prompts us to rethink what space for library work looks like in this hybrid work environment. This is a picture of, the lib of one of our library staff areas in the departments of IT and research and learning services. Uh, it's uh, the workspace for about 50 staff members, and I took it just a few months ago. Our spaces, clearly, for working as individuals, working with users, working with colleagues, 
are more likely today to be virtual than physical. And so it seemed a good time to revisit our questions about library workspace for staff. Hence phase three of the project, which we conducted in the winter of 2021. And this time we didn't need to focus just on staff working in the Charles Library. We opened up participation to other staff in other buildings as well. So that accounts for the increase in the number of departments. So when I talk about a hybrid work environment, um, this gives you an indication of for any one time, um, any one day of the week, how many staff might be working remotely. This is the fall 2021 uh, schedule for um, staff. And you can see that a good number, 28, 29 staff members um, are are working from home on those days. And some we have some staff who work from home or remotely 100% um, of their time. So the experience of on-site physical workspace has changed a lot. Uh, whereas early on, earlier on, staff would say it was noisy and distracting to be among so many other people, while doing individual work specifically, um, now our space is very quiet. And in fact, some uh, describe the workspace as a ghost town. According to our interviews, many staff do feel more productive when working from home. They save time, not having to commute. They see cost savings in terms of commuting, uh, lunch preparation, even um, clothing for, for work they save on. Um, they're using from home a variety of different types of spaces from the kitchen table to the couch to a home office or a closet. That didn't seem to be um, making a big difference in terms of their satisfaction. Some did report having to upgrade their internet connections, their bandwidth. Uh, they reorganize space, move a desk, uh, clear off a dining room table. Some bought additional equipment or furniture particularly chairs. What they valued most uh, is not something so tangible. And it's that feeling of being respected and trusted enough to do their work remotely. And that was important. These two quotes relate to uh, the idea of control that um, someone working remotely feels they have over their day and their space. So that could mean having the, the freedom to walk the dog, do a load of laundry, move from uh, the dining room to the kitchen to the bedroom with a laptop. And people uh, really spoke to that freedom um, and control quite a bit. But this was interesting also that on the flip side, staff described at times feeling isolated, feeling lonely, um, definitely many spoke to the sense of uh, less organizational cohesion. Uh, they uh, describe having less of those serendipitous connections with colleagues outside of their immediate work groups and their department. So this is interesting to me of uh, the organizational dynamics that may be changing because of this new work environment. Um, how in the long term will it impact our organization? If there's less spontaneous interaction between staff who are di in different departments uh, and we need to be more 
intentional in connecting with colleagues, how do we do that? And is that going to be harder to do with people um, who were not working with on a regular basis? Um, particularly as we mentor and orient new staff into the organization. How will that happen in this environment? Silos have always existed in the organization uh, based on departments, staff level, or functional area. And now there's an additional potential divide, and that is not only between staff who are on site and staff who are not, but staff who have more opportunities to work remotely and staff who do not, um, for various reasons, of course. Now, students have returned to campus and are in the physical library in full force. Uh, and of course, we do have for, for services like circulation, we have staff who are there to help them. But most of our consultations and reference interactions and instruction are done virtually now. Uh, and um, between staff, we are learning to use some new tools like, like Slack. And that has been, um, has worked very effectively in connecting uh, us together in informal ways, uh, particularly when uh, we are helping patrons and helping patrons to navigate from one service to another, from the circulation desk, say, to a reference consultation. So some things that we are doing now and are um, recommending one is to invest to make sure that our technology in the meeting rooms supports, fully supports hybrid meetings. So that means excellent um, audio and visual and technology that is easy to get set up. Um, we're continuing to look at new workflows and looking for ways to provide more flexible opportunities for remote work if that is desired. And then in addition to um, the technology that supports hybrid meetings, let's share best practices with one another to uh, make sure we're facilitating a successful and inclusive hybrid meeting so that whether a staff member is on site or working remotely, they have an equal voice. And that's what many of us are finding is that if it's all, all Zoom and everyone is on Zoom, that works pretty well. But when some a group is on in person and another group is remote, that can be more challenging in terms of meeting dynamics. Ideally, a good research project will generate uh, through its findings additional research questions and, and this one has um, done that. Um, what types of work, services, and resources are best provided in person? And what can be done as well or better outside the confines of the physical building space? That's important to understand. And how does this hybrid work environment impact our organization? What are some ways in which we can continue to share that common vision uh, and particularly in service to the university. Are there ways in which we might build community um, and connect informally, socially uh, that we need to consider when it was more, perhaps more natural when we were all in the physical space together? And finally, it's really important for us to understand and explore how our user communities are impacted by these changes. 
this research project that I'm describing focused really on staff and or staff experience with users. But how are students and other user communities experiencing the library spaces and the resources and their interaction with staff differently? And will their expectations change over time as well? I wanted to quickly provide a shout out to the staff participating as team members over the three phases of this project. As everyone knows, uh, this research is a lot of work. It pays off in terms of building skills, of course, in conducting qualitative research, but as well learning about our colleagues and what they do and what they experience. Of course, I want to thank ARL. Uh, who posed these questions to begin with, and that was the impetus for all of this. Thank you.